Well, good morning and welcome to the Grow Omaha Show on News Radio 1110 KFAB. We're brought to you by D&M Roofing, Omaha's premier commercial and residential roofing contractor. And of course, NAI, NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. My name is Jeff Beals. I am your co-host and I'm sitting next to the other co-host. We like to call him the legendary real estate deal maker because that's kind of what he is, Trenton Maggot. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope it's been a good week for you. I know... Uh, hot, 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 but it's been a great week. Yeah, it has been uh, plenty hot, but that doesn't matter. It's the middle of summer, and uh, we can handle that. But Trenton, I tell you, even though it's hot, um, I was at Nebraska Crossing a few days ago, and the place was busy. A lot of people there buying things, getting great deals. I, I always swore when I was a kid I would never utter these words as an adult. So I'm going to violate my Uh-oh, promise. Here we go. Back to school shopping. A lot of people are doing back to school shopping right now. If you're going to do it, I don't like to think about school starting because it just means the homework wars are beginning again in our family in a few weeks. But if you still have to get your back to school shopping, that's where you want to do it. Last week, we talked about two new retailers there, Grunt Style and Woof Gang Bakery. We also told you a couple weeks ago that we've got some big national names coming there that we'll be able to tell you about soon. Still not ready to mention them, but they're coming, and we're getting closer. We're thinking in a few weeks. Also, August 21st, we'll be doing a live remote from Nebraska Crossing, and hopefully we'll be able to say those two big national names. At at Grunt Style. I'm looking forward to that. That's right. We'll be inside the Grunt Style store, um, and so we always love doing our live remotes out there because a lot of listeners come by and – and, and say hi and all that sort of thing. And as Trenton likes to say, we do not sign any body parts. That's true. Um, now, make sure, if you haven't done it already, that you get your fast cash hooked up on your Nebraska Crossing app because you can get 15% back on all of your purchases at the major retailers there. Well, let's go, Trenton, straight into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. Um, we send, anytime someone comes to Trenton and me and they say, I got a refi or uh, uh, my, my, my aunt is going to buy a new house, who, sh- who should she uh, get call, to do her loan? Call Holly. Holly Eagle takes Mortgage. good care of Eagle people. EagleMortgageCompany.com. Uh, conventional FHA, VA, they do all of that. So uh, uh, feel free to talk to them if you're thinking about refinance or buying a new house, EagleMortgageCompany.com. So Trenton, the big news this week was Joslin Art Museum. Now, we knew from, gosh, maybe a couple of years ago that this was coming down the pike. There has been uh, talk about a major addition. And a while back, perhaps about a year ago, people were talking about a signature piece of architecture. And I can remember a a year or two ago, people saying, Omaha doesn't have enough of those world-class architecture buildings. And so um, Joslyn went and uh, worked with an extremely prestigious architect and renderings were released this week for a 42,000 square foot edition, $100 million project. $100 million. I remember $100 million was a lot of money. Do you know? I think it still is, though. In the late 1980s, when Jobbers Canyon was demolished and the Riverfront Conagra campus was built, huge project, five buildings, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Do you know what the total cost of that was? How much only 60 million really and so now that just shows you how much cha- has changed now to build all of conagra's campus was 60 million now one 42,000 square foot addition to an art museum albeit a nice addition is a 100 million dollar project that that shows you what can change in 30 some years absolutely but i i like it I, so have you seen the renderings yeah it's beautiful i i cannot wait uh to to see what it's like. I cannot wait to walk through. It's going to take a few years. Scheduled opening would be 2024. The addition is going to be known as the Rhonda and Howard Hawks Pavilion, primarily focused on modern art. But as I look at the rendering, you see the classic 1930s Joslin Museum uh, with all of its Art Deco beauty. To the north, you see the what I thought was a very nice, tasteful addition put on in the 90s. And then this would be kind of to the east of that. So, so if you're looking at the main steps going up to the iconic entrance to Joslin, this would be to the northeast of that. Okay. 
But can't wait to see it. it, it it's going to look great. And uh, these are the types of amenities we want to keep adding in our city. I think it's a great, it's a huge refresher, but it, it, it kind of, you got the classic there and, and you're, you're refreshing it. And with, with the new Illuminarium coming and other hot spots, I, I think that this will bring people back to the Jocelyn like never before. Well, and we've always talked on the show about the importance of Omaha being the three-day weekend destination. I mean, we're, we're never going to be the place where someone takes a week-long vacation in January, for God's sake. But we want to be the place where someone does the two- or three-nighter over the weekend because we have the great restaurants. And truly, we are a culinary capital of the Midwest. And with the new science museum, with, with improving an already good Joslin, I know a lot of out-of-town people who, have thoroughly, jo- who have thoroughly enjoy going to the Durham. Absolutely. Museum as well. So, and then you throw in the zoo and, and some, some of the music other venues. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're really starting to step up that game and and being more of that regional draw for someone taking that short vacation. Anybody that lived in Omaha or visited Omaha ten to twenty years ago, you won't recognize Omaha. Yeah, and that's a that's generally and a good that's thing. That's a positive thing. Yeah. Hey, yesterday or rather a couple of days ago, Trenton and I were at the ribbon cutting. For 8601 Dodge Street. This is that really long building. We've talked about it a couple times over the last year because it has been going through this huge renovation. Well, that is now fully done. And this was the building that, like I said, it's a really long horizontal building, three stories tall. It actually holds up the Leo A. Daily headquarters to the south. And we had a ribbon cutting because NP Dodge Residential Sales has one of its Uh, residential sales offices in there. We had kind of the official ribbon cutting. Mayor was there. uh, A lot of the executives from the Dodge Company. That building turned out really nice. And then we also mentioned last week that a freestanding Starbucks is under construction. Absolutely. That's what that dirt is there for. They opened up part of the parking lot, and that'll be neat. And then there's room for another uh, full-service restaurant to the east. And then they have some space on the second and third floors uh, for office space. Well, the Blackstone Improvement District um, is the the entity, or I should say the Blackstone Business Improvement District, but that's the entity that kind of protects and looks after and coordinates um, efforts in and around the Blackstone District. And plans were released this week for a $4.5 million improvement package would really be focused on the streetscape, traffic flow, Basically, if you go through Farnham right now, which is the spine of the Blackstone District, there are two lanes going west and one lane going east. Proposal says let's narrow those lanes just a little so that it kind of makes for a little bit more of an intimate urban feeling, slows traffic down a bit, put in a center turn lane, and do a lot of lighting and sidewalk improvements. And uh, one of the things they want to do, Trenton, and I know this from a couple of times stumbling from bar to bar in the Blackstone District over the last couple of years, some of those sidewalks as currently configured are pretty damn narrow. Well, I don't see you stumbling anywhere. A couple uh, times, yeah. Or probably. going bar hopping that often, at least not in Omaha. You yeah. might hide it when you go out of town or something like that. A couple that, times. But you hide it well. Um, but it, it makes sense to, to put a foot or two more on the sidewalks. If, if you think kind of just to the east where... Um, Midtown Crossing is, they did a nice job on those sidewalks around those retailers, and you've got that diagonal parking there. And um, so I, I think it's due. I think that the, the lighting elements will be good, and it's a natural progression of all the uh, economic development that's done around there in the Blackstone area. And then, of course, we do have a project coming to the Blackstone area that we're very excited to see come out of the ground. That is the nine-story mixed-use building that would be immediately west of the Kimpton Cottonwood Hotel on what is primarily a surface parking lot right now. Uh, That thing cannot start soon enough because the renderings of that building, I think, are off the chart cool. So, Trenton, I took a little drive a few days ago on Harney Street, and we've been talking about this Harney Street bikeway. Have you had a chance to drive it yet? No, I is it, it in place? It's cool, yeah. So, so it goes from downtown. Now, it doesn't go all the way down to the old market yet. It kind of, it kind of stops temporarily where they're doing all that construction by the Juvenile Justice Center by mm-hmm. the Douglas County Courthouse. But west of that, it goes all the way out to Midtown. And so what, they, what they've done, they took the southernmost lane uh, on Harney Street. and It's dedicated, right? It's dedicated. 
And so now it, it became two lanes for bikes, so two little lanes. And then on the north edge of that, there are a whole bunch of these little um, plastic, they're kind of like plastic bollards. A bollard yeah. is, uh, for those people that don't know construction terms, is one of those concrete-filled yellow painted metal tubes that prevents you from ramming your car into the quick shop or uh, uh, colliding, <laughs> colliding with a window on a drive through they're, they're like littler, they're like littler plastic versions of bollards and they've yep. painted some white lines, but they actually, they have parallel parking for the cars has moved out. And so you actually can parallel park your car in two or three blocks of parking spaces that are defined by paint and bollards. Um, but, but that said, uh, it is really cool. The only concern I have, the only concern I have is how will these bollards hold up when city plows are recklessly pushing two feet of snow around? And I'm worried about jackasses uh, who will maybe try and run the things over. Or something like Ho that. Hopefully not, but I think... Hopefully I didn't give anyone an idea. There'll be a lot of scooter drivers on that, too, I bet. Oh, yeah, I suppose there would be. I think it's a great idea. It looks cool as can be. And it's my understanding, if this works well, it's kind of a pilot, they would make it more permanent. So I'm wondering if that would be maybe something a little more durable than than plastic little sticks. But, but we'll see. Great, great idea. I think it will be used like crazy, obviously, during the good weather. It'll definitely be watched. Okay, Equitable Bank is uh, has just opened a, a branch office. So Equitable Bank is out of Grand Island, Nebraska. It's a $425 million bank. Been in Omaha for several years. Office uh, right in Old Mill South. And so they decided, hey, we want to have a bigger presence here in Omaha. So they j just opened this um, new branch office. And uh, it looks great. It's at 202nd and Pacific, about 3,500 square feet full service. And um, so if you're uh, interested in checking that out, drive by sometime. That's a hot area of the grocery store and everything. Good grief. Yeah, it's, it's amazing every time you go by there, all the construction that's happening. Well, that is your news of the week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. They know mortgages like nobody knows mortgages, and you can find them at eaglemortgagecompany.com. When we come back, we're going to talk about construction. We sometimes like to kind of, you know, geek out a little bit on construction projects, talk construction, and we have Patrick Sokol with us. He is the uh, Nebraska market leader for Turner Construction. And so stay with us. It's never better than when we talk about construction, right? All of that coming up on Grow Omaha. You're listening to the show brought to you by NAINP Dodge and DNM Roofing on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to Grow Omaha, the area's only show that focuses on the growth and development of your favorite city. I'm Jeff Beals sitting next to Trenton Maggot. We represent NAINP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. We're also brought to you by DNM Roofing. Um, Eric Obrumt is the owner there. He has put together an outstanding team of people who do great work and take care of clients. So uh, if you are looking for a new roof on your house, call DNM Roofing. If you are a decision maker or owner of a commercial building, they have an amazing preventative maintenance program that really takes care of commercial roofs. DNMRoofing.com. Well, periodically, we like to talk construction, and so we brought in a construction expert we have with us, Patrick Sokol. Um, he is the executive in charge of the Nebraska market for Turner Construction. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning. I appreciate you guys having me. Well, it's always good to have you on the show. Welcome back. And um, we love talking construction because ultimately, that's pretty much what Grow Omaha is all about. <laughs> and um, so, uh, so how is the market in Omaha right now? Because Gosh, when we drive around, we sure see a lot of projects. You know, I would say white hot. Um, there's a lot of building going on, a lot of development, as you can see. I think it's Omaha starting to really recreate itself. So for us, we have been getting in front of that commercial market, meeting with developers. Um, I think there's a lot of others from around the region and the country that see Omaha as an opportunity. So we're working with some of those national organizations to do builds uh, here as well. And then, of course, you know, just from a technology standpoint, um, we've seen that investment along Highway 50 and 370 uh, as well. So um, it's definitely a very hot market. I mean, it's it's been going great. So since last time you were on, we saw lumber prices and construction prices go crazy. And just specifically, lumber prices went up, what, four and a half times or something like that. And we've, we saw them come down about 40%, it looked like. 
uh, over the last month or so. Are, are those stabilizing, or what do you see on construction prices? I think wood is is definitely stabilizing. Um, you know, when it comes to other inputs, steel, copper, PVC, paint. I mean, just across the board are still going up. Um, lead times are still longer than they used to be. Um, and so it's something that we definitely have a, a pulse on, tracking weekly of what things are doing, staying close to the market, especially larger mechanical, electrical, and steel, of what those inputs are doing. Um, I don't see it, and we don't see it slowing down. We do produce a quarterly um, market analysis on Omaha, the region, and then the nation. Um, and still see a lot of those inputs trending up. Supply chain wise, are, are we seeing that getting strained out? There's a lot of concern about just getting the product, no matter what the price was. Yep, I mean the demand is is still up, and um, the other inputs, even related to getting uh, materials to the site, is up. Um, and so again, there's just going to be continued delays in materials. So the sooner we know what we need, we can start to order that, procure it. Um, it's going to help with timeline for sure. We're talking with Patrick Sokol from Turner Construction. Patrick, what are some of the big projects that Turner is working on currently here in the Omaha area? Interesting. Big is somewhat relative, so we have some smaller projects and some bigger projects. Uh, It is exciting that we're wrapping up build five and six of the data center work out on Highway 50. We just started scraping and putting in foundations for the next build, which is going to be one, two, three, four, and five, six um, out on Highway 50. So... For us, that's work now and six, seven years down the road, which we're excited about. And then we have some smaller things that we're doing. Um, Chase Bank is here in this market. We've completed a few small TIs. Um, Right now, we're doing a fit out and a rehab of a building on 132nd and Center uh, for them. And then 5G technology continues to advance. We are working with Verizon. Uh, We're doing a lot of their 5G enabling across town. A lot of that's data center. Uh, type work. Um, and right now, too, we're over at Merck. Um, there's some large projects going on. We're doing a Merck lot of Health, other, right? Yeah, Merck Health, Merck, Merck Pharmaceutical. And we're just doing a lot of um, smaller projects for them, infrastructure type things, but they're really technical. There's a lot of um, policies and procedures with Merck that we need to follow to make sure that we don't mess up any of their labs and the technical. Uh, that's a good that thing, doing. yes. Yeah. Well, and that's their complex along West Center Road at about, gosh, what, 216th, 210th. It's out there a ways. Yeah, it's out yeah. there a ways, yep. But, but, yeah, it's amazing the amount of work that has been underway on that campus for a while now. Yeah, for a long time. And there's steel going up right now for a larger, a larger project. That's taken a little bit of time just due to input costs and being able to get things to site. So, mm-hmm. Patrick, um, we were, we were talking um, about some of the construction projects that you guys are doing, but you, you might be doing some work for yourselves um, here pretty soon. I understand you guys might build a, a facility for Turner to use here in the Omaha area. Yeah, I think what Turner's policy is we'll probably end up leasing uh, that facility. Um, we'll do definitely the build out of it, but we're, gonna, we're looking at between fifty and 70,000 square foot of warehouse space. One reason, so we can get materials sooner. We can store them, make sure that we can meet schedule. Um, in that demanding environment for that client. And then on top of that, uh, we're going to build out our SPO special projects operations inside there with prefab. And then we will have an office roughly 3,000 square feet. So just give people a little larger, better working environment than where we're currently at. You're well ingrained in Omaha the last few years. Yeah, we have. I I think the story when I talk to people is Turner going to be around. And Turner is definitely going to be around. We're not going anywhere. We're investing heavily in people, in resources. Um, we have great clientele. Um, and then beyond that, we're digging into the community from a workforce development um, piece where we're helping to educate 18 to 30-year-olds, giving them a different way to get involved in construction versus a typical um, post-secondary uh, education. Um, That's also bringing us in touch with the underutilized business enterprises that exist, helping to educate them about general construction. So just trying to raise the bar across the board for construction in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because when we talk about construction, one of the most frequently considered topics is the the labor force shortage. And uh, part of that is because we have a shortage of people who do just about anything right now in this economy. But 
Um, but construction has been booming in Omaha for some time now. And, and it seems like our construction grows faster than our population, uh, which is probably a testament to our great economy here. But um, can you get into a little more detail about some of the things that Turner is doing to try and get those 18 to 30-year-olds that you mentioned uh, to say, hey, maybe, maybe I do belong in that business? Yeah, so I just starting early in high school, bringing them out to our job sites, walking them around. What's kind of exciting now, we're moving beyond some of the COVID um, pandemic things that were there, being able to actually bring students out in person, have them see in real time what goes on in a construction site, and then have them sit down with the different trade partners and really learn what happens from the mechanical standpoint or the electrical standpoint or even just general construction and drywall uh, and things like that. So they really get a sense for construction. Think about when we were in high school and, and, and junior high and Jeff and I went to, to the West Side Community Schools. I don't know if most of us knew what we wanted to do, 7th grade to 12th grade, and it's, it's neat how Turner's coming in and saying, okay, here's a, give us people some ideas, give, give kids focus so they, so they kind of can, can set their sights a little bit. Yeah, we're working with a lot of local um, organizations, too, to supply scholarship money. So in junior, senior year, putting up special projects for them to get involved in. And then, you know, we've had some great interns and those scholarship winners out to our uh, offices and to the job site as well. And it's just great to see the excitement um, and the passion that people have for construction moving forward. So if we can continue to grow that, share with people what construction is, it's going to benefit Omaha. Hopefully it benefits Turner. I mean, that's what we're trying to do, but also just the, the community at large. Yeah, the community at large. So, Hey, we have another minute with uh, Patrick Sokol, Nebraska market leader for Turner Construction, uh, which is doing a number of projects here in the Omaha area. Many of our listeners make construction decisions or they hire contractors for their projects. Um, I've always thought it was kind of interesting. You know, Turner works with clients well. They have a pre-construction approach that that sets the company apart. What can you tell us about um, how you work with clients and, and, and how you do things early on to make projects a success? That's a great question. Um, you know, Precon definitely does set us apart. Um, I think one of the things is just our scale as a company and our reach around the country as far as projects. So we found and we've had a lot of success in projects that are somewhat of a unicorn, a little different to Omaha. You know, a developer or an organization is looking at this project and trying to get their head around it, trying to come up with really comp prices of where this building is going to come in at. Um, and so, and they also want it to be kept quiet. They don't want the market to know. They don't want to reach out to trade partners. So it really allows us to reach out across the country to our 46 other offices, find those projects, start to develop comps, and put together and establish a, a, a base cost for them that um, you know, can be agreed upon, but that's trusted. Um, and so I think that's one thing that definitely sets us apart. Uh, and then we do have incredible trade partner relationships. So I, I was out at uh, Sarpy County event last night, and they were talking about the, the billions of dollars that are happening in Sarpy County with projects. And, um, you know, we looked around the room, and the rest of my colleagues at Turner just smiled because a large percentage of that work is our work that we're doing. And so we have fantastic trade partner relationships. And when we do need to reach out, we do need to understand the numbers really well. We have really trusted. And we partners. understand, you, you just told us that, the Sarby County Economic Development Corporation has changed their name. They have. You yeah. break it here first. Yeah, announced last night they're going to be called Grow Sarpy. Huh. Do you think it has anything to do with the Grow Omaha show? I was say that name rings a bell. It, it sounded quite familiar when they announced it. So <laughs> I'm just going to say we, we have no problem with that, but if the Greater Omaha Chamber decides to call themselves Grow Omaha, we're going to have a little chat. So Im imitation that, is the sincerest form of flattery. That's true, but let's just put that out there right now. There's not going to be a Grow Omaha for the Greater Omaha Chamber. Well, unless we start opening checkbooks. But okay. <laughs> but Patrick, we really appreciate you um, being a part of the show today and uh, really appreciate all the things that you and your colleagues are doing for the Omaha built environment. It's amazing what Turner Construction's up to. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, we enjoy coming on the show, um, being a sponsor. Um, as well. So thanks for the opportunity to come in and share a little bit about Turner and what Turner's doing in the yeah, community. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. We'll have you back next quarter. Wonderful. Thanks, Patrick. All right. Patrick Sokol, Nebraska leader for Turner Construction. Going to take our middle of the show break. And when we come back, it's time to talk history. Brand new book just published this month. It's called A History Lover's Guide to Omaha. 
We have the author Eileen Worth with us. You're going to love this. Stay with us. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to Grow Omaha. This is the show that you listen to if you want to be in the know about how your city is changing. I'm Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Bradley Magid. We are from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. We're also brought to you by D&M Roofing. Hey, we do want to uh, mention it is the Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. We appreciate Noddle Companies being a sponsor of the show. And uh, they have so many projects going on in the Omaha area. Last week, we talked about the uh, new 115,000 square foot building they are constructing near Nebraska Crossing. Also making progress on their row houses at 38th and Dewey by the Med Center. Those things are going to look great. Uh, Coming along nicely. Earlier in the show, we were talking about activity in the Blackstone District. That is yet another example of housing options that are coming to Blackstone. And uh, we also want to uh, have you not forget that Noddle Companies also does uh, Exarbon. Uh, They're doing Rivers Edge and Council Bluffs, Steel Ridge uh, and Gretna. And that's in addition to projects all over the Midwest. So we thank Noddle Companies for uh, being our sponsor and for being an Omaha-based company that is one of the top real estate developers in the region. Well, we want to talk a little bit about some Omaha history right now. New book that is out by a well-known Omaha author, Eileen Worth, and uh, co-authored by Carol McCabe. We have Eileen with us here in the studio. The book is called A History Lover's Guide to Omaha. Good morning, Eileen. Good morning, Chip. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to have you back on the show. And uh, you, you are a prolific author. Well, that's very kind of you to say. <laughs> yeah, I, ha- I and my specialty has turned out to be local history. Mm-hmm. And so I love writing about it. I've been in Omaha since 1969, and this is my probably fourth or fifth book on local history. So. Well, we had you on the show not too many years ago um, talking about uh, the book that chronicles the history of the Henry Dorley Zoo. That was outstanding. Thank you very much. Well, this is by the same publisher, they have a nationwide series on History Lover's Guide to XYZ City, and they asked if I would do the one on Omaha. And I said, sure. And then uh, interesting things happened. I was working on another book project, which I'll probably come back to you about, uh, a history of Omaha women that hopefully is going to come out next spring or late next spring or summer, University of Nebraska Press. But... They came to me, and I said, well, I can't do it until I get done with that. Then the pandemic hit. And then my dear friend Carol, who, like me, is a Creighton University retiree, uh, and Carol and I have collaborated on things before. And Carol and I were trying to figure out, how do you do a guide to uh, what amounts to local history when you can't go in any museums or (laughs) any of the historic buildings because everything is closed down? So we came up with what I now think was, it was kind of like necessity is the mother of invention. So we came up with the idea of looking on the historic streetscape with historic buildings, the state historic markers, historic neighborhoods, parks, cemeteries, golf courses, you name it. And we have divided Omaha east of 72nd Street, which is really, for the most part, the historic area. And we took various neighborhood segments, did chapters around them, and then created tours so that you could either drive or you could stop your car if you wanted to walk someplace or see, find a particular historic marker. But we have, for all the various old neighborhoods, we have these walking and driving tours. That sounds fantastic. It makes sense. And uh, you can get, I don't want to forget this, people can uh, buy the book on Amazon.com. Yes, and better still, since you promote local businesses, they can buy it at local bookstores. And I particularly want to give a shout out to two that are great. Next Chapter Bookstore at 25th and Barnum and The Bookworm at 90th and Center. Those are, I really, really want to support these local booksellers who support local authors. They're Hometown really favorites. Wonderful. Well, and speaking of the bookworm, understand you're going to be doing a, um, a lecture and a signing at the bookworm? That's correct. On Sunday, August 22nd at 1 o'clock. 
Uh, and I would love to have everybody come out for it and give Beth Black, the owner, who is phenomenal, give her some business. And yeah. there'll be plenty of copies? Oh, yes, okay. absolutely. That's August 22nd at 1 o'clock at the Bookworm uh, uh, 90th and Center on the northeast corner. So Eileen, uh, first of all, we're talking um, with Eileen Worth, one of the two authors of A History Lover's Guide to Omaha, just published this month. What are some, a couple of stories that people might find in the book um, that uh, would be fascinating? Well, I think if you wanted to have an overall theme for the book, Omaha sometimes gets criticized, and possibly justifiably so, because... We tend to destroy historic buildings, i.e. Jobbers Canyon. But the real story in many ways is we save buildings and districts if they make economic sense. And I think one of the things that we've found in doing this is the interesting mixture of old, new, and especially renovated, repurposed buildings all over in almost every district. For example, one of my favorites, and I want to give a real shout out to these wonderful people at the Great Plains Black History Museum. That is in the historic Jewel Building right off 24th Street in North Omaha. And it was built as a venue for African American Omaha back in the 30s. And it became the place where All of the nation's greatest African-American jazz musicians performed. And it's gone through a couple of iterations, but now it is the Great Plains Black History Museum and just an absolutely wonderful place. It's right next to the Union for Contemporary Arts. Now, as you well know, both of you, I'm a former World Health reporter, and I started my career in Omaha in 69. I spent a lot of time in both North and South Omaha. But the thing that I think amazed me most were the many improvements and exciting developments going on in North Omaha. And I really hope readers of this book will take that chapter and that tour because they're going to be really amazed at some of what they see and enjoy. So, There's a lot of other great uh, North Omaha projects, 75 North and... Uh, a lot of investment and, uh, and a lot of uh, new projects going up in North Omaha as well. Right. And the housing. The housing. There are just so many great housing projects. And some fun eating places, too. We also recommend, we, we Carol and I toured. Since we couldn't go in buildings, we spent a lot of time just driving around. And we started looking at eating places and ice cream stops and donut shops. And parks and things that if you are doing the tour of, say, Florence, what are some of the parks where you could take the kids and let them get out of the car and run? Or have an ice cream cone at Zesto's or go have coffee at Harold's Coffee Shop. Neighborhood places, um, the cathedral area, um, you know, you've got Lisa's Radio Cafe on 40th Street. All these great neighborhood gems. We try to highlight these. Well, it's part of the History Lover's Guide, a series of books, and this is Omaha's iteration of that book by Eileen Worth and Carol McCabe. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can not only get it online, uh, but uh, the signing at the Bookworm on August 22nd. Eileen, appreciate you joining us, and thank you for making this contribution uh, to Omaha culture and history and just life. Well, it's my pleasure, and I thought I knew Omaha really pretty well before writing this book. And then just going on all these neighborhood tours and having made these lists of places and going, oh my gosh, I did not know that um, this or that happened at this or that building. And talking about the Blackstone area, that is very exciting. Uh, The Kempton Cottonwood and all the stuff going on there. It's a great example of what we were talking about, about how you repurpose old buildings. In this case, we're taking something that was originally a hotel, became offices, and now it's back to being a spectacular hotel. And just to hang out in that area. And Benson area used to be, you know, it's kind of going down, and now it's so vibrant and exciting. And I hope people will take our recommendations. Thank you so much for having me.
Well, it's our pleasure, and we appreciate you writing the book. Eileen Worth, who, along with Carol McCabe, author of A History Lover's Guide to Omaha. We're going to take our final break of the hour, and when we come back, it'll be the lightning round from Turner Construction. Lots of stuff you don't want to miss it. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge. News Radio 1110 KFAB. Welcome back to Grow Omaha. Glad you have joined us on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot here. And this is the lightning round brought to you by Turner Construction, where we cover a lot of news in a short period of time. Uh, Turner Construction is building for the future with more than 150 full-time Turner employees in this area. Big projects like the Sarpy County Data Center and small projects as well. Everything in between. And we think uh, we thank Turner Construction for being the sponsor of our lightning round. Turner Construction. Well, um, CoStar has entered into an agreement with us. They're going to start giving us a piece of news content every week we that we it. can share with people. That's so cool. Very nice of them to do that. Great analytics. Great market information. Yeah. And uh, uh, Kate Harlan and uh, Bryce Hudak are the local reps here. And... Uh, it's an amazing organization. They're huge now, and uh, they really help real estate professionals uh, yep. understand the market. So uh, normally we'll do this during the news of the week, but we just kind of saved it for now just to kind of announce it uh, here. But uh, the news this week is search engine giant Google is the latest major employer to delay plans to fully reopen its offices as coronavirus cases start to inch back up across the country. Uh, and more contagious Delta variant is uh, gaining a foothold. So that's concerning. The Mountain View, California-based company with a U.S. workforce of about 145,000 people, including quite a few here in the Omaha metro area, would push its initial September return to the office to at least mid-October, an announcement that comes about a week after fellow tech giant Apple made a similar call. So we'll keep an eye on that and see what type of impact that might have on us locally um, as those numbers um, continue to increase, but hopefully don't. Varsity Sports Cafe and Roman Coin Pizza has closed at 49th and Dodge. Other locations are still open, but uh, actively, Gabby Estivo in our office is actively looking for a new restaurant to take that space. About 4,900 square feet, I believe. Sounds about right. Yep. 4,900 at 49th and Dodge. At 4,900 yeah. Dodge. Easy to remember, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I tried. Uh, I, I have uh, I have a weakness for Chicago style hot dogs. Okay, love those things. And so someone told me that a place called Chicago Dog Forty Two mm-hmm. opened up in the Oakview Mall. So last Sunday, believe it or not, I went to the Oakview Mall, and I first walked around. and And believe it or not, it's not quite as depressing as I thought it would be. There are actually decent number of stores that are open, um, including some national brand names. But at any rate. So I go to this Chicago Dog, forty two in the Oakview Mall, outstanding. They got good love. It on was so good. Omaha food lovers, uh, a lot of great uh, feedback on that. Highly recommend it. Yeah, uh, construction. A lot of people have been asking us lately. I had uh, I answer or receive a lot of the emails that people send into the various Omaha emails. What's being built at? Uh, a lot of people have asked about one hundred seventy eighth and Pacific in front of the High V. There, that will be a location for Breaks Plus. Okay. So auto There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Nine existing Omaha area locations, another one for Breaks Plus. Um, and uh, Cunningham Lake reopens August 5th after a three-year, $23 million renovation and upgrade. That's it for this week. We got to call it quits, Trenton. Uh, so I hope uh, everyone has a great, great week. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI NP Dodge and DNM Roofing. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. We will chat with you again next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.